Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making this gorgeous crochet flower box. So I'm just using a flower box from my grocery store, just a little plastic one, super cute, but you could use any floral container that you have. And it has a little bit of grass underneath, so awesome, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. You just use little scraps of yarn and it is such a great stash buster. Perfect for spring, perfect for Mother's Day, makes a great gift. It is the flowers that are always in bloom and you never have to uh, throw them out. Another great thing about this pattern is these flowers are completely washable. So if they get a little bit dusty, we can just remove them, throw them in a, lo a lingerie bag in the washing machine, wash them up and pop them straight back on. So super easy to maintain, super fun and so cute. To make your crochet flower pots, you will need yarn. So just, you can actually just use scraps of yarn. This is just a regular four worsted weight acrylic. So you'll need a color for your center of your flowers plus a color for your petals. You'll also need something to make your grass. I'm using Eyelash Dazzle from Ice Yarns, but you could use any eyelash yarn. And if you don't want to use eyelash yarn or you only have acrylic, you can still do that. You can make a granny square just like this. This is the English Garden Granny Square, and that will fit nicely inside your box or your planter, and you can still put your skewers in, in between all those holes or just in between the yarn, it doesn't matter. You could use this one if you don't want to use eyelash. If you do want to use eyelash yarn, it will look like this. You will also need a planter box. So these are just regular ones from my grocery store. They come in all different sizes. Or you could also use a full size one like I am here. This is six inches across by 18 inches long. You'll also need some Oasis, the floral foam for inside. This stuff is great. It's really handy because you can just keep poking your flowers in any which way. It's light and it doesn't spill. If you can't find this in your area, you could also just use small pebbles or even sand or maybe grains of rice, something that bugs won't come to. But also if it tips over, it would also be a bit of a mess. But that's a possibility if you can't get this uh, floral foam. You'll also need some barbecue skewers. These are just from my grocery store. You get a pack for about 80 cents. And these are also the short ones. They are about six inches. We don't need really long ones for our floral boxes. You'll need some buttons. If you have small buttons, that's great. Or you could use some small beads if you have those. You can keep your eye out at grocery stores for these little bracelet kits for kids, little craft kits. They will have those little beads inside. But you just wanna keep an eye out for colors that you want to use. They're a bit harsh for my flowers today, so I'm going back to my buttons. And then you need a glue gun. You're just gonna glue those buttons onto the ends of your barbecue skewers, the flat bit. So the pointy bit we're gonna use to go into our foam. <laughs> and the flat end is gonna go for the button. You'll also need some stitch markers for your chain just to mark your chain where we're working into it if you're using the eyelash yarn. So I'm just using four for mine for a six inch wide flower box. You'll need a pair of scissors for cutting your yarn. I'm also using a six millimeter crochet hook for my grass, and I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook for my flowers. And yes, if you'd like to follow along with a written pattern, they're available over on my website, secretyarnery.com. And you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there right beside you. So let's get started. To start the center of your flower, grab your center color. I'm gonna be starting with a magic ring, but you can also do a chain three ring if you leave a long enough tail, because we're gonna to have to sew that chain three ring shut. You want it to be nice and snug. That's what's gonna hold it up on its stick. But I'm gonna show you how to do a magic ring, and I'll also link one up in the cards, a tutorial just for the magic ring. But give it a try. I'll show you all my tips and tricks. So lay the tail over your non-dominant hand and just pinch it down on your ring finger. 
just like that. Wrap it around your two fingers, making an X, and then wrap it around all three fingers, just holding it underneath your thumb as well. Turn your hand over so you have a short strand and a long strand. Grab your crochet hook. I'm using a five millimeter for my flower. Slide it underneath the short strand and grabbing the long strand, bring it under and point the hook towards yourself, turning that hook and releasing your thumb a little bit so that long strand can slide. Grabbing the long strand, releasing it with your thumb, now you can go ahead and just pinch that loop on your hook and bring the working yarn through. So there is your magic ring. And chain two. One and two. So this is going to count as our first double crochet. And now you're going to make seven double crochets into that ring. So there is one. two, and make sure you're going over your tail, three, four, five, six, and seven. Our chain counts as our first stitch, so that counts as eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, just shrink down your magic ring. We don't have to snug it down really, really tight right now. And now we are going to slip stitch to join. So just the top of that chain two, right there, and we want two strands of that stitch on the top of our hook. So just pop your Hook in two strands on the top of your hook, bring it through, turn, and bring it through. So a slip stitch to join, and chain one. Cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through, and snug that down to secure. And that is the center of our flower. I suggest making a whole bunch of these centers first, and then you could just grab one and make your flower. And that'll just help you get all your flowers done really quick. more left-handed crochet tutorials. There are more than 160 of my easy left-handed tutorials in this playlist right here. So now we're ready to start our petals using the same crochet hook, we're just gonna work in to the front of our stitches, so the pretty stitches inside our dish, and we're just gonna be working in between those stitches. So just into that space. We're not working into the stitches, we're just working in between the space. So just pop your hook in, loop of your petal color or your flower color on your hook, bring it through, slip stitch with both strands to join, dropping your tail, and chaining two. One and two. Into that very same space, four double crochets. Into the same space between those stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. Pull your hook up to make a bigger loop. Take your hook out. Now we want to go into the top of that chain. We're going to make a popcorn. So go into the top of that chain two we made right there. Top of the chain, two strands on your hook, on the top of your hook. Loop back on your hook. Just hold it on with your finger. Shrink that down and bring your hook through just like that to form your popcorn and chain two. One and two. Now find the next space between those next stitches right there and wrap your yarn and make five double crochets into the next space. There is one, two, three, four, 
and five. Pull your hook up to make a bigger loop. Take your hook out. Now we are going to be looking for that very first double crochet we made right there. So pop your hook in, two strands of that stitch on your hook, loop back on your hook, and bring it through that stitch and chain two, one and two. So we're going to do that little popcorn in between each stitch all the way around. So into the next space, five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Pull your hook up and into that very first stitch we made. Right there, slide that hook in just into that very first stitch, the first double crochet, just into that stitch, loop back on your hook, shrink it down, bring it through that stitch, and chain two. One and two. So now you can pause the video and keep working around, doing a five double crochet popcorn in between each stitch all the way around, and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. You will have a total of eight popcorns. There we go, we have our eight popcorns all the way around, and I've done my chain two. Now, into this space right after our first popcorn, we're just gonna pop our hook right into that space and slip stitch. Just like that, so that finishes our first round of petals. Now we are gonna start our second round of petals. So chain two, one and two, and into the space, we're gonna work into the spaces all the way around, the space in between our popcorns. So into this very first space, three double crochets. One, two, three, chain two, and slip stitch into that same space. Slip stitch. So that finishes our first petal. Now we're gonna slip stitch into the next space after the next popcorn. So slip stitch into the next space. Chain two, one, and two, three double crochets into that same space. One, two, three, and chain two. One and two. And we're gonna slip stitch into that same space to finish. So slip stitch into that space and slip stitch into the next space. Just like that. Chain two, one and two, three double crochets into the space. One, two, and three. Chain two, one and two, and a slip stitch into that same space. Just like that. So now you can pause the video and keep working along, starting your petal with a slip stitch into the next space, a chain two, three double crochets, a chain two, and a slip stitch into that same space to finish. So pause the video and keep working around. A new petal in between each popcorn of the row below. You'll have a total of eight, and I will meet you when you get back into your last space. When you get back down to where, when you get back around to where we started, I've done my chain two, three double crochets, and chain two. We're gonna slip stitch into that same space to finish just like that, and chain one. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail. Pull your hook up and your yarn through, and snug that down to secure. 
Now you are welcome to sew in your tails if you like, but I'm gonna show you how I do mine. So flip your flower over. Now we're going to tighten up this center ring. If you did a chain three, it'll look a lot like this. You are going to want to pull it really snug, thread your needle, and just cinch that up. So sew in your tail around and give it a nice big tug to close up this circle. But if you did a magic ring, just give it a good pull. We just wanna close up that center and we're just gonna tie these together. So I'm just gonna give them like a triple knot. So there's one, two. I try to pull this one as long as it doesn't slip, and three. This one I pull really tight. So there is my three. And of course you can sew in your tails if you prefer. And I just cut my tails. I leave a little bit extra. I don't cut them right off, I leave that much right there. And then I'm going to do the same with my petal color, and I'm going to try to make my knot closer to the center tail. So I don't want my knot on the edge, I want to bring my last tail in to meet my first tail. So we want the knot to be more on the center of our flower. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it right over there. See where it is? see where it is right by the center. So I'm just holding it there while I knot it again. We just want it to be in that area and it's also not super tight. I just want it to behave really. So pull that one snug and knot it one more time. The third one I pull really really tight. See that one's a bit loose. It doesn't have to be really tight, we just want our, well the knot has to be tight, but our tails can be a bit loose, we still want our flower to look natural. And then just snip off those tails as well. And there is our flower. So go ahead and get that done for the rest of your centers and we will be ready to start our flower box. So get your oasis blocks put into your planter, depending on what size planter you are making, and you can do lots of different kinds of grass. So if you are using just regular four weight worsted acrylic, then I suggest using the English Garden Granny Square pattern. All your stitches face up and there's not too many big holes. It looks really cute as grass. So I will link this tutorial in the description box and the cards if you want to just do a square with regular four weight worsted acrylic. So if you are making a square planter box and just using a worsted weight acrylic or just a regular acrylic, I'll link this tutorial so you can make this kind of granny square. If you're using an eyelash yarn, which really does look totally like grass, I'm going to show you how to do it for the rectangle, but you could also just use a regular granny square and that is easy to get the right size. Isn't that eyelash dazzle so great? All right, so those are two options for squares. And now I'm going to show you how to make a rectangle grass for your planter box. My planter box on the inside is about six inches or 15 centimeters across. So using your eyelash yarn, go ahead and make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. And we're gonna chain sets of three. Get your stitch markers handy. We're gonna put a stitch marker every third stitch. So chain three, one, two, three, and pop a stitch marker into the stitch you just made, or into the chain you just made. One, two, three, and pop a stitch marker into that last chain. It doesn't matter what loop you grab, just anything where it stays underneath your hook on one strand. Two, three, so we're just gonna keep chaining three and popping in a stitch marker. And three more. One, two, and three and pop in a stitch marker. So there is a chain 12. I've used four stitch markers. 
So that's a chain 12. Grab your planner box and stretch that chain as much as you can and just pop it down into your planner box. Oops. <laughs> So grab your chain, stretch it as much as you can, and put it down inside your planner box. You want when, you're, when it's stretched to almost fit, but it can be a bit smaller. Our, our granny squares or our grass is gonna grow. So we definitely want it to be on the smaller side or on the more narrow side. For, so for this six inch planner box, I'm gonna do a chain 12 going across to start. So this chain 12, when I stretch it, is about six inches. So now we're gonna go ahead and chain three more. One, two, three. And now into that chain where our first stitch marker is, we're gonna do three double crochets. So just pop your hook in to where that stitch marker is three double crochets. And yes, you can't see the stitches. So just feel with your fingers what we are up to. And that's why these stitch markers really help. So there is our three double crochets into the chain. Now we're gonna go over to the next stitch marker and three double crochets into that chain. One. two, and three, and into the next chain, three double crochets. Well, the next chain with a stitch marker. Every, we're working into each chain that has a stitch marker. Three double crochets into each. So pause the video and keep working along and I'll meet you when we get to the end of your chain. At the end of your chain, we're gonna work into that last chain somewhere over here. Now we can't really see where it is and it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna push our hook in to the end of our chain. Just wiggle it in until it reaches in somewhere until it fits and do three double crochets into that last chain or the area of the last chain. There is our last three. Now if we bring our planter box back over, this will look small inside here. See where my end is? It looks like I've made it one shell too short, but we're gonna gain a shell. So don't worry, if yours is looking too small, don't panic, so does mine. Let's keep going together. Now this is gonna be the repeat, what we're doing row after row until our grass is the length we want it to be for our planter box. So chain three, we're always gonna start with a chain three. One, two, three, and we're gonna turn our work. Now if you wiggle your fingers in, you will feel these spaces in between the shells or in between our sets of three. So find the first space in between those sets of three double crochets. And in that first space right here, three double crochets. So I'm just holding that space open with my finger and thumb, just so I know where it is. So there's one, two, and three. Now the next space is right over here. So wrap your yarn and into the next space, three double crochets. Here's two and three. And then wiggle your fingers to find the next space right over here, three double crochets. And I just hold it open with my finger and thumb. One, two, and three. And into the next space, three double crochets. So you can pause the video and just keep working along, depending how big yours is. Three double crochets into each space. Just using your finger and thumb, just feeling for those spaces. Awesome. 
already looking grassy. Now at the end of your row, we have our three double crochets and we have that chain space right at the end. That is where we're going to put our last set of three double crochets. So wrap your yarn and three double crochets into that chain space right at the end of our row. Three double crochets to finish our row. One, two, and three. So there is our grass so far. So now we're just going to keep doing that. So we're going to start with a chain three. One, two, three. We're going to turn our work and into the very first space right there. We're going to do three double crochets just into that first space. One, two, and three. And into each space all the way along, you'll be able to feel them with your fingers. All the way along, we're going to do three double crochets into each space. So pause the video, work your way along, and I'll meet you when we get into this last space. At the end of our row, into that very last space, you'll be able to feel it with your fingers and your thumb. We'll do our last set of three double crochets right into that space. Three double crochets to finish our row. So one, two, and three. So that is our grass so far. We can bring our planter box over. And now if you just lay it down inside, you can see that that is actually the right size grass. So a little bit small, or it feel a little bit small in the beginning, but when you're finished, or after your third row, you'll be able to see the size it is. So just make sure that you're happy with how big it is. I think that is great for my planter box. And now just pause the video and keep working all the way up until your grass is the height you want it to be for your planter box. When you think your grass might be long enough, just pop it into your container. And when it fits, you're finished. So chain one and cut your yarn. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. You can sew in your tails if you feel like it. Pop out your stitch markers. And that finishes the grass. Now that you have all your flowers ready and your barbecue skewers are ready to go with cute little button or bead on the end, we are ready to start assembling. So just grab your flour and poke your barbecue skewer straight down in to where we made it really tight with that magic ring or magic knot and slide it all the way up. And then just poke it into your flower box. Just poke it straight through your granny square or your artificial grass right into that oasis floral foam and it'll stay just there. So just leave it like one or two inches above the foam for a natural look. And then just keep going, assembling and inserting all of your flowers. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked.